star honor student Felicia Simone Barnes was born on January 12, 1994, in Monroe, North Carolina. She was beautiful, with a smile that could light up a room. And when it came to education, she excelled at Union Academy in Monroe and had plans on graduating early to attend Townsend University for early childhood education. She planned to have a career in either education as a teacher or a counselor. She was a lover of theater and music, but most of all, loved her family. It was in December of 2010, Felicia was visiting her older half-sister, Dina Barnes, in Baltimore, Maryland. She was having the time of her life, spending time with her sister that she loved and looked up to so much. Felicia had planned on tagging along with her sister that day to her job, but when the morning came, she decided not to go and just sleep in. Dina said okay and went on to work with plans to connect with her sister later on. While at work, Dina tried several times to get in touch with her sister to check in on her, but she couldn't reach her, which was unlike Felicia, to not answer the phone and not call back. When returning home, Felicia was nowhere to be found. This alarmed Dina and the police were called. When the police arrived, an investigation took place. There were several things that disturbed the investigators. When searching the home for any clues, they noticed that Felicia did not take anything with her that she would have needed if she left the house willingly, including her shoes, which meant that if she left the house, it was in her slippers. They learned later on from a witness that at some point of the day that Felicia went missing, they saw Felicia walking towards Reistertown Road Plaza, but that was the last time that they saw her. It was also concerning that there was no activity on her social media pages, or her bank account. Time went on and so did the search for Felicia. After some time, her case eventually became nationwide news, which caused the search to grow, with over 100 members in law enforcement and volunteers. But even with that, there weren't any leads that came up. But all that changed on April 20, 2011, when workers found a body close to the Susquehanna River, and the authorities were able to confirm that it was Felicia Barnes by her dental records matching the body. And a medical expert named her case as a homicide. Shock came over all that knew her when learning that her body had been found. She was an honorable teenage girl. So who and why would anyone want to take the life of this young girl? There were so many people that assisted in the search for Felicia. Everyone but one key person. That person was Michael Johnson. Michael Johnson was the ex-boyfriend of Felicia's older sister, Dina. Johnson was a person that was not only a part of Dina's life, but also played a role in Felicia's life as well. It was said that Felicia had a little crush on him, but he always addressed Felicia as his little sister. So because of all of this, it was strange that when learning that Felicia was missing, that he appeared not as concerned as everyone else. And when contacted by Dina, instead of coming to help right away, he stated, keep me posted. But the strange behavior didn't stop there. After a few hours of the investigation team and others searching for Felicia, Johnson finally came around. And in the conversation with Dina, he says to her, this isn't good. I was the last person that saw her. And it just so happened that on the day that Felicia went missing, Johnson was moving his things out of Dina's apartment since they were no longer together. There were witnesses that observed Johnson dragging a 35-gallon plastic tub upstairs to his new apartment. The neighbor that saw this offered to assist him due to him looking as if he was struggling, but Johnson refused that help. When this information was given, it made investigators want to do more digging into the connection between Johnson and Felicia. While investigating Johnson, the police found phone records for Felicia's phone and saw that there were an abnormal amount of text messages exchanged between Felicia and Johnson, more than 13,000 to be exact. And when questioning Johnson on his whereabouts after he was done moving his things out, he did not disclose his whereabouts. There were other key pieces of evidence that connected Johnson to Felicia's murder. Finally, Michael Johnson was eventually arrested for the murder of Felicia Barnes, after trying to flee the police as well. 
The trial began, and in the beginning, there were so many different twists and turns in this case. A gentleman that knew Johnson was a surprise witness, James McRae. James McRae stated that there was a point when Johnson contacted him, requesting him to come to his apartment. When doing so, Johnson revealed to McRae that he had strangled Felicia and wanted his assistance with getting rid of the body. He also stated that Johnson admitted to being physically involved with Felicia. The trial continued and the attorneys went back and forth with the defense trying to present holes where they could. But the jury's deliberation was guilty of second degree murder. But what happened next stunned everyone. When returning for sentencing, the judge made the announcement that the verdict was being thrown out due to the testimony of James McRae and the fact that the state had not turned over that information to the defense. And although shocking, this was not the end. Sometime later, there was a retrial for Johnson and the prosecutors had information that no one saw coming. There was a tape that was discovered that had shown Johnson, his brother, Dina, and Felicia drinking and engaging in some form of sexual contact with one another. This was something that was shocking for the father of Felicia to find out. But it was believed by him that this was also proof of how Johnson lured Felicia into possibly something more. But after the prosecution played a recording that the jury wasn't supposed to hear, the judge immediately declared a mistrial and eventually dropped all charges against Johnson. Afterwards, the prosecutors appealed the judge's decision and a third trial took place. And although the family was hopeful that this time, Johnson would be found guilty, the judge acquitted Michael Johnson, stating that there was still not enough evidence presented to convict him. This was devastating to Felicia's family. After all the work that had been put in, there was still no justice for Felicia Barnes. But the tragedy that happened also motivated them to not just take defeat and to continue to have hope. In 2012, Felicia's law was passed in the Maryland General Assembly. This law requires the state to publish a list of missing children along with statistics and a list of volunteers who can aid law enforcement in search for missing children. Felicia Barnes was the first minority child to have a bill named after her. But even with that, the circumstances that led to this were more tragic than anything. And to this day, Felicia Barnes' case remains unsolved. Mm -hmm.